Welcome to learning react with me. I am back with an interesting hook that would help your applications performance in case you're dealing with expensive operations. And that hook is use memo. In this video, you're going to learn what is use memo, when should we use it and how to use it. Let's jump right into the code. I will create a component called users list, which would render the list of users on the screen. Let's start creating the component. and export it. This is going to render the list of users, which we will be adding later. So uh, to get the list of users, I am going to use JSON placeholders free API to get the users. So this is the one we are going to use. And in order to call this API, I'm going to copy this code. Uh, and I want the list of users to be loaded when this component is initially rendered. So I am going to make use of use effect hook. So use effect, let's call the API with the code which I copied. But uh, here, instead of to do's, I want to call users API. So uh, this is going to make a call to users API and convert the result of this API into JSON. And here they are uh, logging it to console, but we need to hold this data in some state. So let's create a state to hold users information. So users set users and let's make use of your state. Initially users object is going to be null. Once this use effect is called, we need to set this user state with the data returned by the API. So instead of console log, let me call set users and pass JSON data. So this will set this user's object with the JSON data. Let me use capital U here. And we want this use effect to be called only once that to when the component is loaded for the first time. So add a empty dependency array. If you're not aware of the use effect hook, or if this is the first time you're using the use effect hook, please go through the video on use effect in react playlist. I have given the link in the description. So now we are calling the API. We are setting state users with the data that we have returned. Now we need to render this data. Uh, let's just take a look at how this data is going to be in this API. So let's click on this users. So uh, every user object is going to have a name, email, address, which has street, city, and zip code. So I want to render this user's data on the UI such that I see the username and uh, uh, email ID and street, city, and zip code. So I want some processing on this user's uh, data to be done. So instead of doing that processing in this uh, component, I want to make use of some external uh, uh, let us assume that there is a utility function that will take this user's data and give me the transformed data in the format which I require. So let's create that utility function here. Uh, usually you'll have it uh, somewhere in some other file, but let me just create it here for the demo. So I'll just say get users uh, list and this will accept uh, a in order to avoid confusion, I'll just say data. So here, what I'm going to do is, uh, I am going to check if the user's data is available or not. If the data is not available, I will simply print a message on the screen saying no data available. If the data is available, then we are going to return the uh, user information which contains username, email and the address. 
So first, if the data is available, I will use map function to go through each and every item in the data list. And here I will say, so I want to display username. So D dot username. Let's just verify. So this is the username. And I want to display email. And I want to display the address. So in the address, I don't want this complete information. I just want the street, city, and zip code. So how do we access that? It should be d.address.street, comma. Let me copy the same thing. Instead of street, I want city and then zip code. Yeah, so this is the information that get users list is going to return me. Now, I want to make use of this function in my component users list. So what I will do is I'll just create a variable which says user um, or some other name or uh, maybe user list equals get user list and the data which we need to pass is users and we are going to display this user list here so let's see how this is going to be rendered in the ui i have already added this users list in app component so this is how uh, my user details are rendered. This is the first user, second user, third user. Let's just add some styling here. Um, so to this uh, div, I will say user hyphen details. I have this class already created, which would look something like this. So uh, let me add a console log here to see uh, when this function is getting called. And so log, I'll simply say uh, generating a user list and print the data. So save it and open developer tools. Go to console. Let me clear it and refresh it again. Uh, okay, let's uh, ignore this error for now, but uh, look at this. We are making a call to this function twice. One, when the data is null, which is the initial value which we have assigned using use state. And the second one is once the API call is completed. That is when this is data is loaded and stored in users. So whenever the users uh, is changed, this method is getting invoked. Now, I will add some uh, filters to this uh, component. So let me create another uh, state variable which says name. I want to filter the list of users based on the name of the user. Set name and this name will be initially null. Um, sorry, empty string. So let's create a uh, input here. Inside which we have label that says filter by name, and then we have a text box. So, uh, when we enter some text in this text box, we need to store that uh, entered value in this name variable. So, I will say on change, we call this method set uh, name. And we are going to store the data typed in the input box using event.target.value. So I don't have any uh, functionality yet 
uh, once I type something into this, I just uh, update this name variable. That's it. I'm not disturbing this uh, user's array as of now. But ideally, what is expected is once we enter this name in the text box, we need to get the users that match the uh, name typed into the text box. But for now, I am not adding that functionality. Let's just uh, look at how this is rendered on the screen. So we have this uh, text box here. Uh, let's try to uh, fix this error. So what it is trying to say is uh, in order to render this data efficiently, we need to add some identifier so that React would identify if this is a, a record that needs to be updated or not in case of any update. So it will identify this record uniquely. So what is unique in our data? It is ID. So every user uh, will have an ID. So I'll just say D dot ID. Now this error will be gone. Let me just refresh. We don't see the error. So uh, filter by name, we have this input. Let me just type something. Look at this uh, console. I typed something. And I see this generic user list being called, even though there is no change to the user list. So I haven't really added a functionality to filter the user's uh, list, but still I am making a call to this user's list, which is unnecessary call because the data is still the same. Even if I enter this or not, the data is still the same uh, before adding the functionality. So that is an unnecessary call let's see how to handle it but before that let's add the real filter functionality here so uh, we have a set name and we are updating the name variable here now uh, let's update this get user list uh, a bit so instead of just accepting the user data it will accept the filter as well so i'll just name it as uh, name filter and inside this, I will filter the data using uh, the filter which is passed to this method. So filtered users equals data dot filter. And uh, we have a name property to every user. Let me just convert this to lowercase so that the comparison would be easy. If it includes the text typed in the text box, then that is a matching uh, username. So this statement here, what this, what we are doing here is we are trying to uh, check if the user in this list, if there are any users in this list whose name would contain the data entered in the uh, text box. So now instead of checking for normal data, we'll check if there are any filtered user. And even here, we want to filter only when there is data. Otherwise, we don't want to filter. So here, uh, I am replacing data with the filtered uh, users. So this is going to remain the same. Now, instead of passing just users, I'll pass the filters alt, uh, name also. So now we have the names and usernames and other details of all the users that are returned by the API. But I want to filter it uh, uh, using some name. I will just say GRA. And there is only one username which matches with GRA. But I will type something else. If there is no match, I should see no data available. A uh, filter would uh, return an empty array. So let me just add one more condition. So if the filtered users has no data, for example, if its value is null or undefined, or if, if it is an empty array, I want the length to be uh, greater than zero. So if it is equal to zero, I want this message to be printed. So let's go to the UI. Now uh, we see the complete list, but if I type something, if there is a matching record, it would display that user details. If there is no matching record, it would simply say no data available. So uh, we have added the filter functionality, but 
uh, uh, I want to add one more functionality. For example, I want to have an uh, option whether I want to see the details of filters or not. Like I want to click on something which would display this filter. When I click on it again, it would hide the filter. So let's try to add that functionality here. I will name it as uh, show filters and set show filters. Based on this value, we will display this uh, filter options because as the application grows, you might have uh, many other filters. This is filter by name. Uh, you may filter by city in future. So uh, in order to save space, you might want to hide them by default. Only when the user wants to make use of this filter, he will click on that and he will be able to see the filter details. So here I will just create another uh, div uh, based on the filter value I want to display a message hide filters or show, fil uh, show filters okay and if this data is available we will render this filter section Let's see how this is going to look. But before that, let me add a class name called filter and another class name called filter section. So uh, by default, this is uh, let's assign this value to false. We don't want to see the filters by default. So let me just refresh. So we have show filters here. If, if I click on this, okay, uh, when we click on it, we need to set this show filters value to true. So I will add another functionality on click. I will call this function set show filters. And I will assign the value opposite to show filters. So if this value is false, it will toggle it to true. If it is true, it will be toggled to false. Now let's go back, refresh. So show filters, I'm clicking on it. I am seeing the filters. If I click on it again, it would be hidden. So uh, now we have the complete functionality ready. Let me just uh, clear this console, render it again. So for the first time, user list is going to be null. And hence, uh, we will be seeing uh, no data available uh, for a few seconds until this data is loaded. Once the API returns this data, user's uh, state will be updated with the data returned by this API. So once the data is available, we are calling this function again, and we are seeing the list of uh, data, uh, list uh, uh, from the API here. And uh, once we click on show filter, we have filter by name available and we can uh, filter this data. So uh, since we are passing this uh, variable to this filter, uh, this uh, generate user list method, we will be receiving a new set of user details. Based on that, we will be refreshing this section. But look at this. Uh, now let me clear this. I will just hide the filter and show the filter. So every time I toggle this filter section, I am making a call to this generate user list, which is an unnecessary call because this hide or show section has nothing to do with this uh, generating user list, right? So every time making a call to this function might be expensive because in our case, it's just 10 users. But in real time applications, you might have thousands of users, which would be time consuming, right? And when the data is not really changing, it is not required to call the same function again and again, only to get the same data, right? So in order to save such expensive operations, React has provided us with a a hook called use memo. How it will function is first time uh, when we make a call to the API and get the data 
and set the state variable uh, users with the data returned by API, we will pass that users to get user uh, list. So that will transform the user information and return us the transformed user list. We will store that uh, data in the user list variable, which will be rendered on the UI. Next time, if the UI has to be re-rendered, but there is no change in the uh, filter name or the user data, we don't want to call that you generate uh, user list. So it will, instead of calling the actual uh, get user list method, it would retrieve the values for the combination. Like uh, now it is an empty string and we have 10 users. So for this combination, it would store the uh, data in a cache. So if the combination is same, now if I click on show filter, height filter, the combination is still the same. We still have 10 users and the input name is empty. So this com for this combination, it would get data from the cache without calling this method. Let's see how we can uh, implement this using use memo. Uh, let me import use memo hook. And uh, after importing, we need to wrap this method with the use memo hook because this is the method responsible for retrieving the data for these two combinations. So let's just say use memo. Uh, import this from react library and close it so this use memo is going to take two parameters the first one is a function that is going to give us the required data and the second one is a dependency array based on which this function has to be called or the data has to be retrieved from cache here our uh, dependency array will contain two things one the users list and the other is the name. Why are we passing users list? Because first time the value will be null and the second time once the data is updated in the user state after API call, we need to call it again. So users, when users uh, is changed from null to the actual data, we want to call this. Otherwise, we don't want to call it. And the second thing is we have a filter here. Initially, it will be empty string, but as the user keeps entering data, this will be updated and we need to call this method. If there is no change in the name, we don't want to call this method again. So these are the two values we need to pass into the dependency array. Now let's save it and go back to the UI. Now, uh, initially console will have only two logs because uh, this is a valid uh, call. Initially it was null and the users uh, is updated from null to the actual data. So this is a valid call to the method. Now, if I click on show filters, hide filter, show filter, hide filter, I'm not seeing a call. Previously we saw calls even when I clicked on it, but now we don't see that call because input is uh, the two dependencies are users list and this value the data that we enter into the filter this is still empty string and the users list still has 10 uh, uh, records so if i just say uh, some if i just enter something into this list i see this uh, called but when i click on hide filter and show filter i don't see any call to this because this the the combination is uh, here this is disappearing for some reason let's fix this issue as well we want the value to be retained uh, even if I click on hide and show filter to this input, add a attribute called the default value and assign it to name because this is the one which is going to hold the value entered in this input. Save it, go back to the UI. Uh, let me just refresh, show filter, type something, hide filter and show filter. The value is still retained. So uh, this is how use memo hook can be uh, useful if you want to save performance of your application in case you are dealing with large amount of data or the uh, operation which might take time or any operation that you feel is unnecessary when unnecessary to be performed on every render. I hope this concept is clear and if you like the content, please like, share and subscribe to Interview Pro. Thank you.